Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the, thought, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the temple police had brought the apostles out of the temple, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now join together in the words of Psalm 150. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with the loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from the Revelation of John. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. It made us to be a kingdom priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come. The Almighty, the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But, when he, but he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Since many of you participated in the reception, either in person or online, of my orders, and since you all were so gracious to show up this morning on a typically low Sunday, I will keep my meditation mercifully brief. I know this congregation enjoys a good poem, and while I am no expert like Father Pere, I will give you one, even though it comes from an unknown source. I thought it was very appropriate for today's gospel. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step. Faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith answers I. Each year, the church celebrates Doubting Thomas Day. It's a curious day um, in the church calendar for this gospel. Personally, I've always felt like we're riding a high from the triumphant celebration of Easter, with all of its glorious pageantry. Look at these wonderful flowers. And that uplifting message from just last week. But now we're here, and we have Thomas, and we have doubt, right on that second Sunday of Easter. Quite frankly, as you just heard, it's a pretty rough day for the apostle. Not only does the guy miss out on Jesus' first appearance to his disciples, but he tells them basically they must have dreamt it. And the only way that he's going to believe in this guy Jesus being the Messiah, that he's risen, is to actually put his fingers into the wounds of Good Friday. A week later, the Lord even calls him out with just that invitation, trace my wounds, see what I've done for you. But if we look a little bit deeper, and if we just get a bit beyond surface level, there's more to this gospel than meets the eye. This is not simply a fascination story of belief and disbelief. This is a story which gives us the very insight into who Jesus is, and ultimately, who we should be. This appearance of the risen Jesus, like all his appearances, tells us something of supreme importance about Jesus. There are many remarkable features to what we call the incarnation, that the Son of God took our flesh as his own, and that he grew up as much as you and I did, except for sin. He ate and drank, he got tired, he slept, and then his body was slapped it was spat upon, it was whipped, and ultimately nailed to a tree. But then, something amazing happens. <clears throat> this same body was raised by God, the Father, from the grave. And all this for us. 
This is gospel indeed. Good news beyond our wildest imagining. But the appearances add one more truth, still even more exciting, of unparalleled significance for our human and Christian living. The appearances of Jesus after his resurrection tell us that the Son of God has chosen this human body forever. Jesus did not revert to what he had been before Bethlehem, the form of God. Until time is no more and through eternity, God's own Son will be clothed in a human body. What a tribute. What a remarkable compliment to our humanity. The Son of God himself wanted the human body that he took from us to be his forever. A compliment, but also a burden as well. It lays on us, and this is the charge for us this Sunday, the task of shaping our humanity, our body, our spirit, into the likeness of Jesus, of liberating ourselves of those things that, if we're honest, make us less than human, therefore make us less like him. This great event raises humanity to new heights. Christ kept his humanity. So the question becomes for us, do we in turn see him in the humanity around us? C.S. Lewis, the author, once wrote that next to the consecrated host itself, your neighbor, and yes, you can take a look to the right and to the left this morning, your neighbor, that person sitting in the pews with you, is the holiest object presented to your senses. For in your neighbor, that person seated to your right and to your left and in front of you, Christ's glory is, hid, is truly hidden. Now, in your own journeying, you will meet thousands of women and men, people of all kinds. The Christian question is now, what will you see with your eyes of the flesh? The Christian question is, what will you recognize with the eyes of faith? Will you be able to see divinity in humanity? Or will your seeing keep you from recognizing? Will the grime and the grit at times of humanity blind you? Will something like cancer or Alzheimer's, the ugly, the spiteful, all those very human realities that make for difference and indifference, for hostility and sometimes hatred, will they prevent you from recognizing in your neighbor your risen Lord? Not only here at church, but out there, when you encounter the breaking heart, the broken body, or even the broken mind, we are called to recognize with our eyes of faith Christ in everyone we meet each day. It's a challenge, yes, I know, but it's one that we're called to. We have walked throughout the season of Lent with these eyes of faith, waiting, hoping, and praying, now that we have arrived in the Easter season, we are asked once more to reaffirm those baptismal promises, to profess our faith again in Jesus Christ, and to go out from here changed. We are to see in those around us, those we love and those, let's be honest, we find at times unlovable, the person of Jesus. Let us challenge ourselves each day to more and more remove the blinders of sin and division that keep us grounded and blinded from the real nature of things. As we remove these blinders, we can be filled more and more with the sure and certain hope that when we awake on our own resurrection mornings, we will be filled with delight and declare like Thomas, my Lord and my God. Amen. Let us stand now for our creed.
and we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge home baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Among the sick, we remember by name Anne, Carlos, Bruce, Ellen, Meredith, Frank, Virginia, Kristen, Brian, Edward, Michael, Mary, Ann, Ed, and Carol. Lord, have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your heavenly kingdom. Among those who have recently died, our prayers are asked for Martha Daly. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion 
upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and he offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of, of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.